Hey, what's up guys? It's Mark here from Blue Moo, and today I am super excited because we're going to be talking about something that I know a lot of you have been waiting for, the best laptops for programming in the current market. Now, um, whether you're just starting out or you're a seasoned pro, finding the right laptop can make a world of difference in your coding experience. Now, I get it. With so many options out there, it can be pretty daunting to pick the right one, right? But don't you worry, because I've been digging into the latest and greatest laptops that cater specifically to the needs of us programmers. We're talking about processing power, RAM, storage, keyboard comfort, battery life, all that good stuff that's gonna keep you coding smoothly for hours. And hey, before I forget, make sure you check out the links in the description below. I've got all the products down there, so you can take a closer look at the specs and um, maybe even snag yourself a new coding companion at the best price. All right, let's dive right in and see which laptops are gonna give you the best bang for your buck, and more importantly, help you crush those coding projects. Stay tuned. So um, let's get into the Dell XPS 15, which, you know, is a pretty solid choice for programming. First things first, the display, right? It's just stunning. You've got this super thin bezel, which they call the Infinity Edge Display, and it truly maximizes your screen space, making it a lot easier on the eyes when you're staring at code for hours. And the screen, it's not just big, it's also, you know, really sharp. If you opt for that 4K version, the clarity is just, wow, it's crisp, making text and everything super readable. All right, under the hood, the Dell XPS 15 packs a serious punch. Most models you'll look at come with these, um, Intel Core i7 or i9 processors, and they're the latest gen too. So we're talking about some serious horsepower for compiling code, running virtual machines, or um, even doing a bit of graphic design on the side. And the RAM, you can get it configured up to 64 gigabytes, which is kind of like having the ability to multitask, like a beast. You can have like a gazillion Chrome tabs open, your IDE, local servers, and the system doesn't even flinch. Now, battery life is super crucial, right? And the XPS 15, it's decent. It's not gonna last you, say, all day if you're pushing it really hard, but for moderate use, you could squeeze out a good eight hours or so. That's enough to get through most of your day um, before you need to hunt down an outlet. And the keyboard, it's pretty comfortable for typing. The keys have got a nice feel, not too shallow, not too deep, so they're kind of perfect for coding. And let's not forget, it's got a solid build quality, feels premium, and it's got plenty of ports for peripherals, so you won't be living that dongle life, you know? Okay, so the Lenovo ThinkPad X1 is um, pretty much a staple for programmers, and for good reason, right? Um, first off, it's got this like super reliable build quality, which uh, ThinkPads are known for. And, you know, when you're coding a lot, that durability means you're not going to like panic about it breaking if you, I don't know, take it to a coffee shop or something. The keyboard is, um, it's really comfortable with good travel, which, let's be honest, that's a blessing when you're typing for hours. And the track point, you know, that little red nub in the middle, can be strangely addictive once you get used to it. Now, performance-wise, the X1 is um, loaded with up to, like, Intel's latest processors, and uh, you've got options for RAM going way up, so multitasking is never an issue. And let's say you're into um, developing in multiple virtual environments, or maybe you dabble with machine learning stuff, the X1 can totally handle it. Um, yeah, oh, and the SSDs are super quick as well, which is uh, great for boot times and software loading speeds and all of that jazz. Battery life um, kind of depends on what model you're looking at and what you're doing on it, but uh, generally it's pretty solid. You can usually get through a full day's work, which, duh. That's super important if you're like on the go or you forgot your charger at home. Um, the displays are usually matte, reducing glare and the resolution. I mean, whether you're going for FHD or 4K, it's sharp, making text and lines of code much easier to read. So yep, yeah, I'd say the ThinkPad X1 is definitely a strong pick for, you know, programmers out there. All right, so today we're diving into the Asus ZenBook Pro Duo. And um, let me tell you, this machine is kind of like a dream come true for programmers. First off, the star of the show has to be that second screen above the keyboard. It's called the ScreenPad Plus. 
so you can have your code on one screen and uh, maybe your reference docs or a debugging tool on the other. It's like having an inbuilt dual monitor setup, which is super handy for multitasking without, you know, cluttering up your main workspace. Now, performance-wise, it's packed with the latest Intel processors, and you've got NVIDIA graphics, which is, like, really impressive. There's no stutter or lag when you're running heavy IDEs or virtual machines, which, you know, can be a real pain if your laptop isn't up to snuff. And, um... The keyboard is slightly tilted, right, which makes typing for hours a bit more comfortable, though it might take a little uh, getting used to it first with the touchpad off to the right side. However, gotta be real here, it's not the lightest laptop around, so if you're always on the go, it might be a little inconvenient. And um, battery life could be an issue for some, especially with that second screen on, so you'll want to keep your charger handy. I'd say for programmers looking for a powerful machine with innovative features, the ZenBook Pro Duo is seriously worth considering. You're basically getting a productivity powerhouse that doubles up your screen real estate, which is pretty amazing, right? All right, so the HP Spectre X360, huh? Hmm, let me see. Right off the bat, this is one sleek laptop. It's got this premium feel to it because well, it's got an all-metal chassis, and that's pretty nice when you're carting it around to coffee shops or meetings, especially for you programmers out there. The 360-degree hinge is really versatile, so you can flip it into a tablet if you need to, um, doodle down some flow charts or something. Now, for performance, which is, like, super important, right? This baby is packing Intel's latest, so you can go for an i5 or i7, depending on how heavy your compiling gets, and, um... Yeah, it's got Iris XE graphics. I mean, you're not going to run AAA games on ultra settings, but for coding, you're golden. One thing I really love is the battery life, because it just keeps going. Seriously, you can code for hours without hunting for an outlet, and that's a big plus. The keyboard. Oh, let's talk about that. It's got a nice tactile feel. Not too clicky, not too mushy, just right for hammering out lines of code. The touchpad is decently sized too, which is a relief, I guess. And um, there's ample ports for all your peripherals. One thing to keep in mind though, it's not cheap, but you're paying for quality and performance here, which is kind of the name of the game when it comes to IT work. So all in all, I'd say the Spectre X360 is a solid choice for programmers who need reliability and flexibility all wrapped up in one pretty decent package. So the Microsoft Surface Laptop 4, right? Okay, um, first of all, when we're talking about laptops for programming, what you really need is uh, something that's not only powerful, but also comfortable to use for those long coding sessions. You know, and I have to say, the Surface Laptop 4 really delivers on that front. It packs the latest Intel or AMD processors. That's pretty cool because it gives you options, right? Plus, you've got up to 32 gigs of RAM, which is... Um, pretty sweet for running multiple virtual machines or development environments. Now the keyboard and touchpad on this thing are killer. They are like so comfortable and uh, coders will definitely appreciate the 3 to 2 aspect ratio on the 13.5 or 15 inch touchscreens. The screen real estate is uh, really nice for reading code without scrolling horizontally all the time. Uh, one thing to mention though, the port selection is a bit um, limited but you do get a USB-C port with Thunderbolt support on the Intel models, which is, you know, it's handy for like docking stations or fast data transfers. And um, battery life, it's a big deal, right? So you're not always near an outlet when the ideas start flowing. The Surface Laptop 4's got that covered with up to 17 hours of battery life, which is, you know, impressive. It means less time tethered to a plug and more time actually coding where you feel comfortable. So. Yeah, overall, it's a solid choice for programmers who need a combo of performance, comfort, and um, portability. All right, um, that just about wraps up our rundown of the best laptops for programming as of this year. Uh, I really hope you found this helpful and maybe spotted something that caught your eye. You know, a good laptop, it's like an extension of your brain, especially when you're crunching code, isn't it? If you're interested in any of the laptops we talked about today, um, don't forget to check out the links in the description below. I've dropped them there so you can get all the specs and maybe snag one for yourself. And hey, if you're still here with me, why not hit that subscribe button?
I mean, it's just a click for you, but it means a whole lot to us here. Plus, you'll get notified about all the cool stuff we've got coming up, and trust me, there's always something new on the horizon. Got a question or want to start a little discussion? Pop it down in the comments. I love seeing what you guys think, and I try to get back to as many of you as I can. It's always great to hear from fellow tech enthusiasts. And if this video gave you your tech fix for the day, don't stop here. There's a whole bunch of other videos on the channel. So uh, dive on in and maybe you'll learn something new or find another gadget that's perfect for you. Thanks for watching everyone. Keep coding and I'll see you next time.